part of being a good homemaker is being a good steward of your food and cleaning out the freezer is a necessary part of that. I have a bad habit of freezing things, that's not the bad habit, but of not keeping them in a way that reminds me to use them first. So what I'm doing today is taking everything out of the freezer, giving it a good wipe down, and then organizing it by like items in bins. I find that this helps me keep organized the longest, although I do have to do this process over again every couple of months. feels good when this job is done but first comes removing everything and sorting it all out Quick rundown, I put a lot of things in the freezer outside. Um, I have a freezer in the garage. I also have another freezer at my mom's, but the freezer in the garage is where the things that I really don't use and like on a daily that I might need to grab are all in the freezer. So what I did was I used these little red containers here um, and I put all of my frozen vegetables in one, frozen fruit in another, this is scraps that I saved to make stock with. In this one I have food that I have frozen that needs to be used. Like there's some leftover uh, pork chili verde, dark chicken meat, um, and then some soups. These things need to be used. And then on this side here I have all my breakfast meats. These are cheeses that, cream cheese or whatever that I would freeze. This could probably actually go outside but sometimes I just need a little mozzarella or whatever so I did keep that here and then right underneath are my frozen breads like when we have leftover rolls um, and an extra tortilla that's in here and then this just sets right up on top uh, ice cream there's no reason we have two vanilla ice creams the only reason we do is we had my grandson's birthday I'm cleaning the ice out that's why this is empty I have frozen potatoes here 
uh, french fries, just breakfast potatoes. And this back here is my grandson's, um, when he comes, just his little snack foods. We don't really eat those, but I do like to keep some from him because you know I am grandma. This little bin up here is like leftover bits of rice. And see, I have three of them, and I shouldn't. I should have used those before I made a new rice. So I'm hoping to have them up front, the same as here, to have the things that need to be used right up front. I'm hoping that makes me look through them and grab them first. So that is all that's staying in the freezer. It looks good. It looks manageable. I cannot tell you how aggravating it is to come in here and just have stuff piled. That's why this stuff happens because I don't want to go through it all. I'm hoping having separate bins for like foods will help me to keep it better organized and help me not to waste food that I never used um, that was frozen. So <laughs> that is the embarrassing moment of cleaning out my freezer. I will clean out the ice bin, let it make fresh ice, and we will be good to go. I better get this closed because there goes that buzzer again. Hi ladies, welcome back to Tea Time. Today I want to keep it light. I just want to talk to you about looking forward to spring. What is it about spring that has us all so ready for a fresh start, for um, a rebirth as it is? And I think that it has to do with the fact that the whole earth um, is reborn in the spring. Everything that looked like it was dead comes to life again. I have certain plants in my garden that uh, every year I would just swear that, okay, this is it. They, they're not coming back. They are just too far gone. They're just brown sticks. And when the sun comes out, come late February, early March for us here um, in Southern California, Sure enough, the buds, the little leaves come out, and it is the most brilliant, fresh shade of green. I love freshly leafed out trees, and that is um, such a joy, and I think such a planned thing um, by God. I think that he knew after a harsh winter, after the bleakness, the brownness, the snow, the rain, the sleet, the mud, um, and for us here, just the brownness of the mountains that um, in the spring are just emerald green. We need, um, we need brightening up. We need cheering up. We need something that says life goes on. And I think that's kind of the same with life. When we are in the bleakest, brownest times, God is always faithful if we look um, to, to just give us that hint of rebirth, that hint of spring, that hint of something budding out. And I think our challenge is not to get stuck in what is not, what appears to be over, what appears to be a loss. Because um, that old silver lining adage, um, it's true. If we look, if we are patient, if we ask God to reveal to us um, some some little bit of hope, some little bit of promise. He's always faithful to do that. It may not be exactly what we want to see resurrected. Sometimes um, certain chapters of our life are over and they that is something that we have to accept in faith, but there is always something new to be found if we don't get stuck in the fact that we lost. Um, so, my encouragement to you this week, and I know this is a short one, my encouragement to you this week is to not get stuck in the lost, not to get stuck in the wise, not to get stuck in the it's overs, but maybe to replace that with what now? Um, or show me, Lord, or um, I sit eagerly waiting if we're feeling especially faithful. I'm just curious from you, um, what is it about spring? What is it about uh, rebirth that gives you hope? 
Um, what is it about overcoming um, that makes you stronger? If you're feeling um, brave enough to share, I'd love to hear. And I, I think the other ladies need to hear how God has been faithful um, when a chapter has ended, when um, something or someone is no longer a part of your life. What has God shown you? What little or big thing um, was God faithful and loving and gracious and merciful um, to put in your life um, to give you hope, to give you um, just the promise of joy and a future. So that's my challenge. Please share. I know there's times we all need to hear and to be reminded and perhaps to be shown again how to look for the faithfulness of God. So I will tell you today, and I haven't even taken a sip yet, let me tell you. Oh, this is good. This is one that I have had forever and I always restock. It is uh, Bigelow's Ginger Peach Turmeric. And I do sweeten it just a little bit um, because you know what? I want to enjoy my afternoon tea. And if a half a teaspoon of sugar makes me do that, then that's what I'm gonna do. So let me know, what are you drinking today? What teas do I need to try? And would you like me um, to let you know how I think of them? There is still more video to come. I wanna thank you for all your lovely comments and for sharing your heart with us. I know it's not easy, but it is so helpful. So let's get back to the video. Thank you for joining me for Tea Time. And as always, thanks for stopping by. I promise I will do a full tour of my craft closet, but until I can do that, I thought it would be fun just to show you how I have things organized and to show you that you can make even a craft closet look cute. finished cleaning out the freezer I went ahead and did the same thing to the refrigerator I had been storing some apples to make applesauce or apple pie filling or I don't know what but I had found apples on sale and I thought uh, what better time than the present to process them peel them core them and make some apple pie filling so I ended up doing that and I came out with an apple pie and a couple of bagged apple pie fillings for later. I did also find pre-made pie crust. Now yes I know I can make my own and I do most of the time but I found these on sale for 99 cents a box. So that is two pie crusts per box. So I had one for now and I have one in the freezer for later. For this week's homemaking video. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, thank you for stopping by and I will see you in the next video.